my art, it's very extreme. And it's not, you don't just be like, eh, whatever. I want them to feel something. I like drips, overspray, I like all that stuff. You know, it's spray paint. It should look like it's spray paint. What is that? It's a claw, but what does that mean? I like to be a little challenging to my audience. I said gorgeous and that guy turned around. He was like, are you talking to me? <laughs> and hopefully um, some little girl walked by and in 10 years she'll say, I saw some girl painting on the street and I want to do that. I wanted it to, uh, to jump off the wall and it worked. This bag is so freaking heavy. I don't know what I got in here. Okay. Oh, there's lots of graffiti on this route. Graffiti for New York City youth is sort of a rite of passage. I think all the kids do it. It's only sort of the uh, loony ones that stick with it. Take me to where I'm supposed to be. Glory, glory, set me free. Graffiti, it was more sort of woven into the fabric of New York City. You were used to seeing it. There wasn't such a crackdown and really Giuliani changed all that and made it uh, a much more punishable offense. I have black books and you get other people to write or draw on them for your own personal collection. Let's see what's in this one. There's a Daze, Velvet Jones, she signed it. There's a Devo. It's Zephyr, that's why, it's so good. Oh my God, a Sane One Sticker, another huge influence on my graffiti. I met Miss Seventeen at this photo shoot where everybody dressed up in sort of these like hideous evening gowns, if you want to call them, stripper dresses. Seventeen and I both refused to be in the photo. And we became, you know, very close. She'd say, come on, let's go paint. And I'd say, nah, you know, I'm retired. I don't do that anymore. After a few cocktails one night, somehow she dragged me out. We did a couple of spots. To my amazement, it was all over the internet. People were raining love on me. I was at a place where if I'm gonna do some painting, I like want to support um, another woman. It was all about like total equality. It was really an awesome experience. I used to write claw, the word claw, and then I started putting nails on the W. I started making it much more bubbly, bubble letter. It evolved into an icon, and then uh, a friend of mine who had a baby, and her baby at two years old said, look mommy, claw paw. I realized I had something a lot more powerful. One can't stay a vandal in for their entire career because they'll end up in jail. So you have to sort of make the nauseating leap to commercialism. My early part of, you know, my street career, it was absolutely not about making money, not about doing a sneaker for Nike, not about doing a uh, collection for Calvin Klein. It was just all about getting it out there for myself. And now I have to do these things to uh, stay visible. Hi, uh, good morning, everybody. Hi.
Fantastic. The summer teas just came in. Oh, I'll be right there. You, Great. You know, they look really good. Oh, they look nice. Yeah. Look at the neon. Yeah, it came out good. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't that look cuter too. like that? A lot of graffiti artists go into clothing. I sort of went the opposite way. I went into clothing and then I went into graffiti. I started making clothes for the Claw Money brand because I realized there was a huge hole in the market. When people look at fashion, sometimes they think women have all the choices, but I think there's a lot of inequality. There were no graphic t-shirt brands that were specifically marketed to women. I started making t-shirts for girls and then that evolved into sweatshirts and jumpsuits and one-of-a-kind jackets and it's just sort of like snowballed into lifestyle and eyewear. And In the realm of fashion is where I realized that branding had such power. The claw became the logo from the street to the clothes. Since this translates to such a powerful image and people are so attracted to it it was natural for me to put my logo out into the world and then for me to step forward and say i'm the person behind this so i'm i'm claw for many years it was sort of like clark kent you know superman thing fashion by day vandal by night i was approached for two years to do a book and i was like nah i'm still painting i did sort of have to stop painting illegally what better way to sort of like close that chapter than to go out with a bang and come out with a book i felt like i'm putting sort of a tombstone on my graffiti career like this is it r.i.p but now i feel as though it's just sort of a milestone and not a tombstone. The girl I'm dressing, the girl wearing claw money, she is the young idealized girl. She is claw money. Someone who doesn't take no for an answer, who fights for what they believe in, who doesn't want to be a wallflower. Down and dirty, high and mighty, it's got it all. Anyone could be a part of this brand. The claw is anything you want it to be. And it didn't used to be that. It used to be really like my identity was. Now that it's out in the world and has been for over 20 years, it's not really about me. It's more about uh, the people interpreting it. Ooh, who's that? <laughs> yeah, you want to type? I bet you my kid is going to be like embarrassed, like, oh, they're talking about graffiti again, whatever. Because aren't all kids like that about what their parents do? That. This. Well, my life completely changed about this baby. And I think it was all about me before, and now it's all about him, and it's a strange shift. I never thought I wanted to have kids and it sort of like blew my mind like how much this like little person um is teaching me how to be a mother so the days i'm home i'm thinking about work and the days i'm at work i'm thinking about home it's very difficult it's really hard to have it all there was a moment Yeah.